This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, specifically another simplified World Chalice combo tutorial video. These are actually very well received. They don't really get the views that I was expecting to see from things like this, but people like them, people want to see more, so why not do more? But anyway, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be expanding on more of the obscurities of the Brilliant Fusion combos because there's a lot of things that people just don't really seem to understand about how Brilliant Fusion can be a very, very superior extender to most of your stuff. So that is what I'm going to be showing you more of today. I'm going to be showing you a weird combo in the form of Gofu plus Brilliant Fusion as a two-card combo, and what it will yield you is at the minimum it will yield you a plus three, I believe, yes, a plus three or a plus four if you want to count the Brilliant Fusion that stays on the field as a card, because again, as the same reasoning in the previous Brilliant Fusion combo I told you about, Nengirsu can use it as a card to out cards on the board by sending them to Grave, so it is sort of a fake resource if you want to count it, but even if you decide to lowball and only include actual immediate resources, then it is still a plus three, and you draw at minimum two cards off of your Ningirsu, but it is very expandable from the point where you Ningirsu because you use very few resources in the form of you don't use your Venus, you don't use your Shine Balls, you, you go into this in a way that just makes it very easy for you to continue play onward, and so that is what I'm going to show you today with a Gofu Brilliant Fusion combo uh, that is basically just these cards. So you obviously start with three other cards if you were going first, and none of these cards actually matter up until the point where you summon Ningirsu. Uh, if you do have a World Chalice card in your hand at the point where you summon Ningirsu, then you can turn this into a draw three combo. Uh, because it just, you know, it allows you to be special summoned next to the Ningirsu, but even without utilizing an additional, an additional card out of your hand, it's still just a draw two combo, which is still very nice considering how few resources it actually uses. And it's one of the reasons why, again, I really like Gofu in a deck like this, because it helps facilitate a bunch of easy two card combos. But with that out of the way, without rambling too much further, your first action is going to be obviously be to special summon Gofu and summon your two tokens. I'm going to be using the right-hand side of the board, as always, because I am right-handed. If you're going to be using the left-hand zone, then just reverse every card placement that I do. Put your Gofu over here, and your tokens slide over to that. So, there's that to uh, keep in mind. But So, you're going to activate the Brilliant Fusion after you summon your Gofu and your tokens for your Gym Knight, Seraph Knight. And off of your Brilliant Fusion, you're going to send your Garnet and your Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, to your graveyard. Now, most people from here will actually make the mistake that I used to make a lot when I started playing this deck in this specific combo sequence as well, and that is most people will use Lee to send Seraph Knight to your graveyard and go from there. That's actually not as optimal as you could be doing. Like, <laughs> it's actually just better to leave the Seraph Knight on the board and actually use your Lee's effect to send Gofu from your field to the graveyard. As weird as it seems, like, it's just you, you want to be able to get that additional normal summon here. So you're back to a good point uh, where you're able to normal summon Lee. So... You'll get your additional normal summon that Seraph Knight yields you for uh, the Lead the World Chalice Fairy, and then you'll use its effect to add World Legacy World Chalice from your deck to your hand. And like I said, all of your combos where you are normal summoning Lee with this deck are pretty heavily susceptible to Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. That's just an unfortunate reality of the situation. Uh, you can use additional cards in your hand to structure plays around Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, but just assuming these are the only cards you're working with, it is very susceptible to Ash Blossom on your World Legacy World Chalice. So, unfortunately, that's just not something we can mess around uh, with playing around right now with the limited amount of cards that we're dealing with for this combo sequence. Like I said, all of your normal summon Lee combos are very susceptible to Ash Blossom because you're either doing this unprotected and, or, you're, uh, or you're transmodifying away the Lee, and both of those are just really huge points for Ash Blossom to just come in and, like, just cuck you. But... So you'll link with these two cards into your Aurum, the World Chalice Blade Master, and your World Legacy World Chalice will trigger, and you're going to summon the World Chalice Guard Dragon and the Beckoned by the World Chalice from your deck. Now, I specifically summon them like this because with the tokens taking up the spot, uh, you want to be able to clear both spots right away. And so the next step is going to be to link with World Chalice Guard Dragon and one of your tokens into your Eeb because they are different types and different attributes, being Wing Beast Dark and being Dragon Wind. So Eeb is here, and then from here, you're going to be able to link with these two cards, the uh, the Beckoned and the Token that's left over, you're going to be able to link those into Proxy Dragon. Now the Proxy Dragon can either be left or right of Eeb, uh, doesn't necessarily matter in any case, 
Uh, but there's there's a few different things that can you know occur and happen. Now, uh, the next step that you have is you're going to use your World Chalice Guard Dragon's Effect Engrave, banishing itself, to summon that Beckoned back in defense position. Now you have a couple of different things that can happen from here in terms of how you structure where you're putting your Ningirsu. Uh, like you could summon your Beckoned over here and link with these two into Ningirsu and do some things. It's, it's very flexible in terms of what your capabilities are, but my preferred method is to link with the Beckoned immediately into an Imduk the World Chalice Dragon and then link with the Proxy Dragon and the Imduk into your Ningirsu. Now from here, you're able to draw two cards. So, like I said, at this point, if you had another World Chalice card, or even another monster in your th three card opening hand, this actually gets a lot better off in terms of a combo sequence. Uh, I say this because what that allows you to do is it allows you to change up certain things. Now if you just had another World Chalice card in your hand, then what you're able to do is you're able to obviously make Mduk Chain Link 2 and then Gearsu Chain Link 1, summon your World Chalice monster, draw three cards. So it extends your draw reach um, by one card. But so just with what we have here with those two cards, the Gofu and the Brilliant Fusion, you end with one, two, three Link monsters and a draw two. So off two cards, you've generated five in terms of actual hard resources. And like I said, you can count Brilliant Fusion as sort of a fake resource, so it could be a plus four because Ningirsu can send it to Grave to pop a card. But ultimately, it's it's a fake resource. So just to lowball it, we're going to say this is a plus three drawing two cards. Now, the thing is that this combo can change a little bit in terms of how you want to perform it, as long as you have additional cards in hand as well. Like, if you have an additional monster in your hand, like a kaiju, then this combo changes to be a draw three card combo because you get the extra monster in your hand to use Lee for. So, I'm going to rewind this real quick and then I'll show you that one just for a quick combo sequencing, just to make sure it makes sense to you guys. Alright, so for this run of the combo, I'm going to be showing the exact same combo, Gofu plus Brilliant Fusion, but I'm going to be expanding on the combo by one card being any monster in your deck. It can be either a World Chalice monster or it can be any other monster in the deck, period. In this case, I'm going to be doing one of the more useless cards which you could be drawing if you're playing my specific build, which is Kaiju cards. Like, turn one, Kaijus aren't really that amazing in terms of what you're capable of doing with them if you don't have access to Waterfront. So you are able to, you know, mitigate them. This could be a duplicate Gofu, this could be any other World Chalice card, it could be literally any monster in your deck. Um, it's very flexible. So, but for this one, you have two additional cards obviously in your starting hand and so we're going to play this one out exactly the same as we did the first time except what we're going to do is we're going to go gofu special the two tokens you're going to activate your brilliant fusion sending your lee and your garnet to the graveyard to summon your gym knight seraph knight and then from here instead of using lee to send gofu to grave like we did the first time you're literally just going to discard whatever monster was there and this works because you have enough space on the field to be able to resolve your world legacy world chalice anyway even without the Gofu leaving the board. In some combos you have limited space, but in this one you definitely don't. So you're going to use your additional normal summon on the Seraph Knight for your Lee, adding World Legacy World Chalice again, and then you're going to tribute the Seraph Knight for your regular normal summon to summon the World Legacy World Chalice out of your hand. And then from here, you're going to link with these into your Aurum, and the World Legacy World Chalice will trigger after that. And you're going to summon the exact same cards. You're going to summon Beckoned, and you're going to summon World Chalice Guard Dragon, and then you're going to link with these two cards, the token and the World Chalice Guard Dragon, into your Eeb, the World Chalice Priestess. And then from here, you can link with these two cards into Proxy Dragon. So you're going to link with the token and the Gofu, specifically here, into Proxy Dragon. And now the Beckoned is able to be linked into your Imduk, or your Link Spider, depending on what you want to do uh, with your resource pool. But now from here, you can use World Chalice Guard Dragon's effect right here to special summon Beckoned to the link arrow that Orm is being point that Orm is pointing to down here. And then you can link with the Proxy Dragon and the Imduk into the Ningirsu. And this allows you to draw three cards. And then you still have the Beckoned on the board. So just by having any other monster in your hand, you can keep the Gofu on the board and you can extend the combo's reach by one draw. So you drew three cards. You had a three card starting hand combo and you end with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards out of that. So it is actually a plus four instead of being a plus three like the two card Gofu Brilliant Fusion combo was. It, just, it generates an extra card out of thin air, out of nowhere, just by having the third card in the combo sequence. Because, yeah, 
Yeah, it, we were counting it as a four card, as a plus four in the previous combo if we counted Brilliant Fusion, but here it just actually just generates four extra cards by itself because you can count these as your three card starting card combo pieces and then you just have four cards on the board that are free and usable as resources. So this deck is really fun. I really like these combos and like this one I specifically like because it's so not resource intensive in terms of your deck. Uh, you still have access to Venus in your deck. You still have all these different plays that are capable of being made. And the fact that, you know, you can you can get rid of duplicate Gofus in your hand off of this play. Uh, as well as the fact that it just, like, it literally trades the Gofu in your hand out for another card draw. Which could be another extender. Uh, generates a lot more stuff. Like I said, Venus is still in your deck to be used. Uh, you can rotate dead Kaijus out of your hand with Lee. Like, I just, if I could play more copies of Brilliant Fusion in my deck, I would. There's a reason I'm playing three Brilliant Fusion and Foolish Burial. And the thing is that you could draw Foolish Burial as an extender off of this combo sequence as well. Because the Aurum has not used its effect yet. Uh, there are so many different things that are good about the, like these Gofu Brilliant Fusion combo sequences because in neither of the combo sequences do you use Aurum's effect until you summon Ningirsu. So you have the capability of like foolishing Venus to Grave and Auruming it back. Uh, you have a bunch of different uh, like resource capabilities that can go on from here, and that's definitely something that I really like. I really like how complex this deck is, but it's very, very much built on the backbone of knowing and understanding these two and three card combos and what they should be yielding you. So there is that to be considered. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. As usual, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Like this video if you want to see more. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! videos like this one. I'd love to please you if you want to make some uh, recommendations of what you want to see in the comments down below as well. Links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you like my content and want to support my ability to make content directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so, as well as it enters you into monthly raffle giveaways for Yu-Gi-Oh! boxes or things of comparable value, as well as gets you access into my private Discord server with me and a bunch of other people to discuss Yu-Gi-Oh! and other fandoms and stuff like that so if you're interested definitely go check out the reward tiers over on patreon but special thanks as always to travis miller iradium jay garcia yuki phoenix and troy perkins as well as everybody else that has supported me on patreon this month you help out a lot more than you may know you help keep this thing a going and you have my eternal gratitude but if you know some people that you might think also like my content you think might also enjoy my videos might also learn from them then i encourage you to share my videos around whether it be in facebook groups on twitter reddit whatever share my videos around anywhere that you feel might help grow the channel and encourage people to subscribe if you want to help the channel out in terms of growth if you really enjoy the stuff that i'm doing here and want to help me out but other than that as always guys thanks for watching as i always say thanks for your time and as usual guys Take care. I will see you in the next video.